When someone is looking to purchase their very first CNC machine, a common question that they start with is, do I need a $3,000 CNC or do I need a $15,000 CNC? And what are the differences between the two? Well, let's take a look. Hello, welcome to Andy Bird Builds. If this is your first time here, this channel is all about exploring the world of CNC and how to make money with it. First, let's look at how these machines are built and some of the components that you'll find at these different price points. And then a little later on, I'll give you my considerations when you're looking to buy a new machine, including the number one consideration, the thing that you should base your purchase on. So let's get started. There are many different factors that contribute to a machine's performance, but the number one thing is rigidity. If a machine is not rigid enough to withstand the forces in which it's being put under as it's cutting, it'll flex. And as you can imagine, if your CNC bit is traveling and your machine flexes, bad things happen. So the more rigid a machine is, the higher performance it is. So it makes sense that a $15,000 machine is going to have beefier parts, it's gonna have thicker components. Uh, all the plates, uh, all the rails, all the bed frames, they're just gonna be made out of thicker, um, thicker metals, thicker aluminums, thicker steels in order to withstand those forces. On the other side, a $3,000 machine is gonna be made out of similar materials, but those are gonna be thinner. They're gonna be weaker than the $15,000 machine. So a $3,000 machine is going to be less rigid, meaning it can't be ran as fast without experiencing some sort of flex somewhere, just because those materials are lighter weight and less rigid. So next, let's look at the drive system and a few of the other components. Now, a $15,000 machine is gonna have much larger stepper motors. I'm not an expert at knowing all the different specs on the stepper motors. And I know some of you that have commented before who have built machines yourself uh, know all these specs really well. So feel free to share them down in the comments below. But when it comes to these two different machines, these two different price points, uh, there is a massive difference in the stepper motor power output, but also the holding power on how much it can hold at a certain step. Um, and then you get into step counts and so it's a crazy world in itself. Uh, but you're gonna find much more high performing stepper motors on a $15,000 machine than you are on a $3,000 machine. So with the stepper motors goes the drive system. How does the X, Y, and Z axis move? So there's three main ones. There's ball screws, there's rack and pinion, and then there's belt drive. So belts are pretty common on a $3,000 machine. And I've talked at length about belts um, in that system. Remember I was talking about at the beginning, I was talking about the entire system, like everything together as far as rigidity and flex and everything. The belts on a $3,000 CNC are perfectly sufficient uh, for the rigidity of that machine. Now, that, it doesn't make sense to throw a four horsepower spindle on a $3,000 machine with belt drive because the belts are gonna be the weak link, if that makes sense. But in that system, in that, let's, let's say, ecosystem of a $3,000 machine, it's a perfectly fine drive system. So when you get into some of the bigger CNCs, that's where you're gonna start seeing the more rigid drive systems like rack and pinion or ball screws. Now I will say in the last year or so, ball screws have been driven down in the market, meaning that there are you know, machines around the $5,000 mark that have ball screws, but not at the $3,000 mark. All right, so the last component that makes up kind of the build of these machines is the spindle. Now a $3,000 machine is going to use a trim router or palm router, uh, something that you'll find at Lowe's or Home Depot for its spindle. So you have to turn it on and off. And then the speed control is just on the router itself, which has the number settings, and that's how you change the RPMs of the router. Now, on the other hand, a $15,000 CNC uh, is going to have a dedicated spindle, a four horsepower spindle, a three horsepower spindle, a eight horsepower spindle. That's a lot more powerful <laughs> than a trim router. So uh, there's a lot of different, just like the stepper motors, there's a lot of different factors here. Uh, but one is it automatically turns on and off. Uh, the second thing is, is speed control. You can program speed in your CAD CAM software. So that's really nice. And then you can adjust speed on the fly, um, you know, without reaching over and flipping, like turning a knob. 
um, to on the trim router that will you know adjust the speed you actually can punch it in and it'll change the rpms so i would say those are the main components that make up the bulk of the price difference right these are two different categories i, I hope you can see that these are two different category machines and uh, but let's talk about some of the other things that are common that people talk about and consider. And the next one is bed size. So with bed size, just because two machines have the same exact bed size, let's say they're both four by four, does not mean that they have the same capacity for performance. Uh, I think that's a, a big uh, misunderstanding out there that, well, this machine, this $3,000 machine is the same size as a, a $15,000 machine. So why would I spend $15,000 if I can get the same thing for three? And that's just not true. So basically, as I've already explained, the components are completely different and those two machines will perform uh, very differently, which I'll explain a little bit more here in a second. So we talked a lot about hardware. Let's talk about some software. Both of these machines require software to run. And uh, generally speaking here, a $15,000 machine isn't going to come with the software you need to run it. A $3,000 machine is going to come with, a, with the software you need to run it. So the software you'll find with the $3,000 machine is going to be proprietary to um, the company that's selling the CNC machine. They're meant to be user friendly. They're meant to get people started that have never done CAD CAM software before. I started with Carbide Create with my Shapeoko. I used that for three years uh, and it was perfectly fine. Uh, when I needed to do something that it couldn't do, I went to Fusion 360. What I am using now is Vectric software. My honest opinion is, is I wish I would have started with Vectric. Uh, Vectric is very uh, powerful, but it doesn't require a lot of power. If that makes sense, your computer is, doesn't have to be like this major robust thing like it does for, for Fusion 360. And it's um, very intuitive and very user friendly, but extremely, extremely powerful, has all the features in it. It is well worth um, the expense. I just talked about the CAD CAM software, but the control software is another one. And that usually comes with a $3,000 machine, doesn't necessarily come with the, the more expensive machine, but you have a lot more uh, freedom and a lot more information on the uh, $15,000 machine then you do the 3000 when it comes to control software. The last thing I want to cover is tooling. Now a $3,000 machine is going to only be able to accept eighth inch and quarter inch end mills. So the collets that you can use, those are, those are the only sizes. Now with a $15,000 machine, you're going to be able to use those two size bits, but you're also going to be able to go all the way up to a half an inch. So three eighths, and a half inch. So this is another thing that comes down to performance because the larger diameter the tool is, the faster it can run because the more rigid, the more material that bit has. So again, that just gives you more options, more things you can cut, uh, more tool paths you can do, and the faster then you can do them. So that's my overview of these two different price points. Now, these two different machines are for two completely different people. And I'm gonna go over that here in a second. So don't feel like, oh, I have to get the $15,000 machine because it's bigger, faster, better. No, not at all. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, this isn't a comparison video. This isn't, this one's better than this one. Um, this is painting a picture of what um, each one entails and um, what that looks like. It looks different for everybody. I bet you're wondering how this translates to the real world. Like, like performance wise, like if you had one uh, CNC over here cutting uh, X material, and then you had uh, the, the $15,000 machine over here cutting the same X material, like what are the differences? How, like what would it look like? And so this is really, really hard for me to put a finger on, not because I don't understand it, but just because there are so many different variables so many variables. So I've used uh, several $3,000 machines and $15,000 machines. And I would say that a, in general, in general, a $15,000 machine will do what a $3,000 machine will do in less than half the time. And that's not all. Uh, the $15,000 machine would do it with greater accuracy because of the rigidity and 
it would do it daily for eight hours a day, 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day. So there's a reason why a machine is $3,000 and a machine is $15,000. It's not because the $15,000 company is price gouging you and has like extreme markups. Uh, no, the value is there. And I firmly believe that you get what you pay for here. And it really comes down to what do you need? Before I share my recommendation, let's hear from this week's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by PCB Way. PCB Way is your one stop for all your PCB, CNC, 3D printing, sheet metal services. They do it all. Offering instant quotes, quick turnaround, and fast shipping, PCB Way is a great resource to have for your next project. So if you would like to incorporate electronics into your next project, or you need a rapid prototype yourself, look no further than PCB Way. Thank you so much, PCB Way, for being a partner of Andy Bird Builds and supporting this channel. So let's go all the way back to the beginning of this video and answer the first part of the question. And that is, Andy, I'm looking to buy a CNC. Do I need a $3,000 CNC or do I need a $15,000 CNC? So I typically answer this question with a question. I know, I'm a jerk. I just don't tell you what machine to get. But I usually ask, what do you plan to do with your CNC? What do you wanna do with your CNC? Uh, what kind of projects do you wanna do? What do you see the future as? Because I believe the number one consideration when buying a new CNC machine is determining how you're gonna use it. So before pulling the trigger on any CNC, it's really important to do some self-evaluation of what I want to do and what is realistic. Uh, and so I recommend going and watching my videos and seeing what I've done um, with the CNC's that I've, I've used. Um, also, go and watch other creators that have shared um, what they're doing with CNC's. I think it's really important just to get an idea of what you want it to be. Do you want to start with a side hustle, but you see the possibility of it growing into something more, and you have a $15,000 budget, jump straight to the $15,000 machine. But if your budget is limited, start with a $3,000 machine, save up some money from the things that you make and sell with it, and buy a $15,000 machine. If you wanna manufacture and sell uh, parts that have really, really tight tolerances and you wanna do it every day of the week, then you're gonna need a $15,000 machine. But if you wanna just prototype single parts and you really don't have a timeline, then you can do that with a $3,000 machine. So basically, if you have really high production rates or you have timelines that you have to hit or you have really, really tight specs you need to hit and you're gonna run your machine daily, a $3,000 machine is not going to do it for you. You're not gonna be happy in that scenario. So you need to go straight to the $15,000 machine, something like the Avid Pro. If you're a hobbyist or just getting into CNC and you just wanna make things and give them away to loved ones or make things and sell things at craft fairs, you can totally do that with a $3,000 machine, something like uh, Shapeoko 4. So I like to think about it this way. You have a Ford Ranger, and a Ford F-250, right? Both Fords, both trucks. You have a Ford, uh, the Ford Ranger is, has a smaller motor, smaller bed size, smaller suspension, smaller uh, tow capacity. You have the F-250, well, it has a larger engine, has uh, you know, uh, stiffer suspension, larger, car, or larger tow capacity, larger bed. And so the question is, is do you need a larger, more powerful truck to do what you want to do? Or are you just the casual truck owner that just wants to cruise around in the Ford Ranger and that's all you want to do? Or you just want a bigger truck. You don't need a bigger truck, but you can afford a bigger truck. So why not get a bigger truck? And I understand there's some people out there like that too. And there is nothing wrong with having a bigger truck. These conversations happen every single day in the CNC inner circle, which is my private group that consists of about 25 CNC owners that are looking to make that, that are looking to get into CNC or looking to make money with CNC. And so if you are a CNC owner, this group is a no brainer to be a part of. And uh, I'll leave a link right here for you to check out. And if you don't like it, honestly, ask me for a refund and I will give you your money back. Um, it's a month by month thing, so no hard feelings. But uh, my goal is to gather as many like-minded individuals that are getting into CNC or 
uh, want to make money with CNC. We talk about all those topics daily over there. So if it's something you're interested in, here's a link. You can check it out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.